Today, we're building an AI agent that's a data scientist, and it'll do all sorts of data analysis tasks for us. I'm going to take you through a Colab file, the link for which will be in the description of this video. So make sure to make a copy of it so that you can refer to it later on. Today's video is part of the Gen AI and LLM projects playlist. And in this playlist, I've built some really killer projects. So make sure you check them out. So let's get started. So we first import Langchain and Langchain OpenAI. Now there are multiple ways to build an AI agent. We can use Crew AI, Autogen or Langchain. Today I'm using Langchain and an AI agent is usually powered by AI. So I'm using OpenAI to power my agent. I've made more than five videos previously on Langchain itself. Make sure you watch them if you're not sure about the commonly used Langchain concepts like memory, agent and tools, because we'll be using them here. Using our OS package and get pass, we set our OpenAI API key. Now, since we are building a data scientist agent, it needs data to run operations on. We're going to get that data set from Kaggle and store it in a drive so that our agent can use it easily. This is one of the biggest reasons why I use Colab because not only do you get easy access to GPUs, but in many cases you have to fine tune your model on some data and you can easily access any data sets stored in your drive. So we mount our Google Drive, then install Kaggle and set our Kaggle config directory as my drive slash Kaggle as part of our Google Cloud. We will then download our data set, which is a Climate Insights data. And since our data is in zip format, we use the zip file package to extract it all into the folder we've created in our Google Drive. Next, I use Pandas to read the CSV data and display the first five rows in the output just to verify that we did in fact get access to the right data. Next section is all about creating our agent. In one of the previous videos, I've shown you the various types of Langchain agents available to us. Make sure you watch that particular video. Now here, I'm going to import agent type. Then I'm going to import a special type of agent, which is called the Create Pandas Data Frame Agent, which is available in the Langchain experimental library. This library usually has new features that Langchain is experimenting with. And once the feature stabilizes, they usually make that feature a part of the regular Langchain library. We also import chat OpenAI and OpenAI to be able to create our agent and chat with it. In the next cell, we create our pandas data frame agent and pass in OpenAI and the document which we had defined just a few cells back. And this has our CSV file data. Now that we have created our agent, we ask it the first question. We ask it to analyze the data in the document variable, which is our climate data in CSV format. And we first ask it to write a brief explanation of the data in around 100 words. And in the output, when the agent has finally resolved, we see the explanation, which is this data frame contains 10,000 entries with nine columns. It has mean temperature, mean CO2 emissions, mean sea level, mean precipitation, mean humidity, mean wind speed. So it's just a mix of weather and environmental data. So just to verify the agent's information, I've shown the output of the type of data in the document with the help of document.info command. And we see that the data is exactly what the agent described. It has temperature, CO2 emissions, sea level rise, humidity, etc., for a location in a country on a particular date. Now let's give it a question that we would ask to a data scientist. Do you think it's possible to forecast the temperature? And sure enough, our agent gets to work. Agents are extremely powerful because they perform a complete workflow to get to the answer. Here you see the agent going through multiple thoughts and then taking actions based on those thoughts. As it keeps figuring out information, it keeps sharing the thoughts with us. In most of these steps, you'll realize that our agent is trying to find the correlation between temperature and all the other available fields, such as CO2 emissions, sea level rise, humidity, and wind speed. And step by step, it realizes that the correlation between temperature and all these fields is quite weak. And while this data can be used to predict the temperature, it won't be super accurate due to the weak correlation. So if you look at the final output of the agent, that's what it says. It says, yes, it is possible to forecast the temperature using the data in the data frame, but the correlations are weak. And this suggests that there could be other factors that have a stronger influence on temperature, and we don't have access to those factors. It creates a graph bar for no reason, but that can be ignored because we got a good answer. The next request I have for the agent is about creating a line graph containing the annual average CO2 emissions over the years. And then something interesting happens. The agent's first thought is correct, that it should use the pandas library to manipulate the data frame, and then it should use a plotting library. But the tool it chooses for plotting in this action is not a valid tool. And in the following thoughts from the agent, we can see the same, that it gets stuck in a loop where it's selecting the same tool again and again, and the action. And in the next observation, it's saying that the selected library is not valid. This also shows agents are not completely foolproof and can run into small issues. So we need to have proper observability and monitoring built in once the agents are deployed. 
I think in the near future, we might have some automatic workarounds for this built into Langchain itself. But for now, we have to manually start the agent again. I give it the fourth question, which is to create a line graph containing the annual average CO2 emissions in Portugal over the years. And I'm really impressed by the output. The agent takes all the right steps and is able to perfectly break down the problem starting with the first step, which is to filter the data frame to only include rows where the country is Portugal, then group by year and calculate the average CO2 emissions. It's able to output the right data by year and then it starts writing the functions for line plotting. And finally, at the end, you get a nice output with a proper line graph. So even if our agent failed in the previous task, it does really well here, even though this task has slightly more complexity. This is exactly what a data scientist would do. The last question is what you would face if you were working as a data scientist at a company. It's about selecting a forecasting model to forecast the temperature and using this model to forecast the average temperature for a year at a location for the next five years. It takes all the right steps from first outputting the location-wise temperature data, and then using data frames to filter the data for that particular location, then using a forecasting model to predict the future temperature, and then filtering for that location. But sadly, there is no data available for that location. So we get the final output that there is no data available for Port Maryburg in Malta for the next five years. Now, this was an awesome little project, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Don't forget to join our Discord channel where we all hang out. The link for that is in my YouTube profile. A quick word for our sponsor, which is you. Yes, you're the sponsor of this video. Now, this channel has very niche technical content that doesn't get picked up by the YouTube algorithm. So it's completely dependent on you liking the videos, commenting on them, subscribing to this channel, and most importantly, sharing these videos with your friends. Thank you so much for all that you've done for this channel, and I'll see you in the next video.